Uh oh. Did this, uh, you know, I think this went to sleep. Yeah? Well, we're going to wait a moment. Let me tell you a little bit about what I'm going to show you. Um, we've been very proud of the fact. Uh, I'm going to need Jenny to come on up and type in your password, please. This is called not thinking through the presenter's experience. Um, we use, this is Jenny, folks. Hand for Jenny. That, the fact that it's her password is your cue that really I'm just doing the talking, but she did a bunch of the work on this presentation. So she gets a lot of the credit. Um, we use a tool, uh, we use high fidelity prototypes in our UI design to go and uh, uh, test our software and experiment with our UI ideas. We believe, frankly, that uh, Avalon, as a platform for building UI, is going to be so flexible over time that we're going to be able to do our prototyping right there. This happens to be a prototype that's built in Director which is a fantastic tool uh, that our product designers use to go and mock up what the interaction of the experience is going to be. I want to walk you through it, and I want to call out some points that we already made and show you how we're thinking about this in, in the window shell, which is basically what uh, a chunk of us here in the room do and what, what I spend my time on. Um, this prototype, uh, is, it's already got a few months behind it, uh, but it also is... Um, uh, but, but it should have some good examples here. So let's walk through. So uh, sure, we got the start menu. Oh, I used the mouse. There we go. Whoa. Okay. Mouse is a little jumpy. There we go. All right. So a couple of things. First, I want you to notice what this is right here. And I don't call this out. This is not a demonstration of the important features of Windows. That's not the point of this. The point is for me to walk you through some of the UI decisions we made and show you how we made them and show you how we took the principles that we talked about before and applied them. So this is an example of building a playback part right there in the sidebar. Uh, and anybody could go build one of these. But the interesting thing about it is, I want you to notice what happens as I hover over. You get this visualization of the audio coming out of your system when I'm not hovering over. But when I hover, all of a sudden the controls and the text are there. Reducing the clutter on the screen, taking things away until the user is right there, is actually a very powerful thing. It's one way, one technique that we use to go make things simple and powerful. Simple is, hey, not a lot of stuff going on. Powerful is, when I'm there, hey, everything's there. And it's just a, a tiny little example, but I show it to you to illustrate the kind of things we're talking about. All right, so now let's dive into uh, to storage here. So here we are in this sort of root storage place. Notice, by the way, again, a simple little thing about thinking about how users think about the software in front of them in their environment. This window is maximized. You may have seen some of the transparency effects that are currently in the, the, the current iteration of the look and feel. Watch what happens when I restore this window. Then it gets transparent. The theory is and, um, that when you maximize, what's your goal? Your goal is to get rid of all distractions. So why would you want to see anything behind the window you're looking at? And again, it's a small detail, but it is the small details when you think about those principles that add up to making it you know, a positive user experience. So let's uh, dive into documents here. Oh, sorry. I have to restore. There we go. Dive into documents. Uh, Another couple of things I want to show you. As I walk through this, I want you to notice there's some degree of consistency as we move around here as well. The fact that I get this rich preview area no matter where I go. So now I dive into this document stack. I get this whole list of items. Um, you know, it's actually funny that we get criticized, just to show you a little wart, why is the number of items so large? Is anyone really dying to know how many there are? And it's a good point. And in some ways, we think, wow, when you're managing tens of thousands and you want to know whether you have a result set that is actually reasonable for you to look through, maybe it is important. But, but today, maybe it isn't. So this is, again, one of those things where do we have a clear, exact answer on what the right thing to do is here? No. No, we don't know yet how big to make that information, how prominent to make it on the user's landscape. But we're going to test. And in fact, the funny thing is that users' interaction, when we get this right in Longhorn together, and users are managing not 1,000 items on their PC and with your software, not 10,000, but hundreds of thousands of pieces of information, this may be critical. And so, in fact, the user's expectations and their goals may really change over time. That's, a, that's really a, a hard puzzle to figure out when you're trying to, to ship software. How do you 
have the software evolve over time there, but it, these are the things we have to consider in making these trade-offs. Notification. So part of the platform we're building enables this. This is a common notification service. You may imagine that today, wow, it would be difficult for them to see it considering the battle that's typically going on in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen with uh, toast and balloons popping up and don't you want to get a passport? I mean, come on, we got a lot of these things. We, we've really got to... Sorry. Um, the, it's, it's a good thing, passport, but we've we got to do a better job exposing this stuff. So having a system service around notifications, having the, um, having the system itself leverage this platform so that we know, okay, this person just shared a file. What is the obvious next thing they want to do? Tell the other person where they can go get it. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, that's what you want to do. Like why would you share it and not? want to. I mean, sure, there's probably a couple of exceptions, but that's the case. So leveraging the system and then also letting the platform come and make part of the user experience great by providing the user ultimately to be in control. So hopefully, we go and choose the right set of default behaviors. And I don't mean just Windows, I mean we. When you use the notification system, you think very carefully about what you really, 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 really need to notify the user about. But once that's done, and hopefully we get the defaults right, hopefully that's great for 60, 70, 80% of the customers. But there's some population that says, please, it's my machine, I paid for your software, put me in charge. Don't baby me. No problem. Click here and you get to start making all these sort of different decisions as a user or as an IT pro about your enterprise for how you want information uh, to pop up to you, if ever. For example, I might set, and I promise we'll have this by default, uh, that I would like no notifications to pop up when I'm presenting at the PDC in front of a thousand people. That would be a setting that I would like. I will tell you just, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you just a quick anecdote. I was doing a, uh, a a press tour for an old product I worked on, and I was using my laptop to demonstrate this new product to a, a room full of uh, 15, 20 reporters, and my mother IM'd me. She's like, hey, how you doing? And I was like, oops, I forgot to log out of Messenger. I have my full screen demo running here. I don't know why it's not smart enough to know that, but okay, the system is not quite there yet. And then I made the mistake of not responding to my mom. <laughs> I, I'm at work. I'm doing, you know, we have a it's professional situation. Press in the room. I'm demonstrating the software. To which all the reporters said, oh. How shameful. You're going to ignore your mother? <laughs> so then my mom and I proceeded to have an instant message conversation in front of the gathered press, where hopefully I redeem myself as not being cold-hearted and caring about my mom. All right, so uh, just a little example of how, of how we can do better. All right, so we click on this here, and what happens? This, again, is another one of these views. You know, I, I want to, again, give another example about how the platform tries to give you a leg up in making a great user experience. Well, what is this? Is this a view of that original person's machine that shared the information? Not really. This is actually a dynamically generated view of all the files that that person has shared with me. When I think about the files that someone shares with me, I don't think about which machine it was shared from. I think about the person who shared it. And it may be a week after the fact, and I have now forgotten the path to that file. I should be able to just click on the person and say, please, show me all the items this person has shared with me. Or even the reverse, show me all the items I've shared with this person and be able to create one of these dynamic views on the fly. And again, even though I am showing it to you in the shell, that's not where we're most excited to see it. You can have these right inside your applications. Whether you want to leverage the common controls to go and use our UI facilities to do it that are part of Avalon, or just talk straight uh, underneath the common controls at that layer of Avalon and go create your own rich, fantastic, powerful views on top of this information. And that's how we've, we've layered the, the, the architecture. But again, the goal here is to give you guys a leg up in making this user experience great. And I, I want to show you why we made these decisions. It wasn't technology for technology's sake. It was about bringing these new scenarios to life as well as as well as making them show up in a way that's, that's fantastic for people.